Hi guys, in this video I will attempt to upgrade the CPU in my ThinkPad T460S. This is my daily driver laptop, I use it a lot, I like it, um, and recently upgraded it to 12 gigabytes of RAM. And so I always thought, since this is the i5 model, how much better is the i7? And from doing some research, <laughs> not that much actually. So that's why I went for the i5 back then. So now, years later, <laughs> I decided I'd have a go and try to upgrade the CPU. You can only do that really by replacing the entire board. And frankly, I still have no idea if this really will work, if all the connectors are the same, if, you know, the internals are all the same. It looks fairly the same, like from what I remember when I took this apart and hopefully it is but we will find that out so here is the i7 processor might have to clean this off better than the seller here but i got this for a relatively good deal like it cost me 100 bucks and i was like you know what i'm just gonna try it and so yeah let's see if this will work from the connectors again from the outside looks the same form factor is the same but maybe we'll have some surprises, who knows. So I did some um, benchmarks in advance. So right now here is the processor i5-6300U and we will upgrade this to an i7-6600U, which is the same gen, same everything, just the i7 model. So here in CPU-C it scored 297.8, so let's, let's call it 298. Single core and multi 811. So that's, I don't know, this is this built-in CPU-Z. Then I ran Geekbench. There it scored here 784 single core and 1,685 multi-core. And finally, the one we all know, Cinebench, the latest one, R23, uh, scored multi-core 1,303 and 668 single core. Those are all the benchmarks I ran. I'm just interested if it really makes all that much of a difference, I don't think. But maybe, just maybe, this i7 can benefit me in day-to-day -day use, just make it a little snappier and maybe load pages faster. And I don't know, I'm not too keen if I don't see any high numbers. If it, if I can notice it, hopefully, in day-to-day -day use, that's fine for me. So yeah, without further ado, let's shut this down, take it apart and swap the board. If you're doing this yourself, save your Windows license, because obviously the different board doesn't have your license. I mean, this maybe has a license on it, but uh, I'm just doing it to be safe. And yeah, it should, in theory, just boot up fine, since there is hardly any difference other than the processor. So that gives me hope that this might work. But yeah, again, I still don't know it. So let's get into it. Let's take this thing apart. By the way, I'm not following any guide. I'm just trusting myself that I can do this. So here is the inside of it. Let's check it out a bit. This is what it looks like. As you see, <laughs> it should just fit in. Fan should be the same. And from like a first look, first glance, all the connectors look pretty much the same, really. So, I don't know, where should I start? Battery, probably a good idea. Take batteries out, then uh, take the fan out, or maybe that comes out altogether. Unplug all the cables. I'll work from left to right, that's how I always do it. But yeah. And then, oh yeah, from the underside here, there are connectors for, I think, what is the keyboard and something else, trackpad maybe. So let's not forget about those. Okay, update. So far, what I did, I put all the components that are removable on the new board. So RAM, SSD, and wireless card. As you see, pretty easy, just plugged in. Now I need to remove the fan and I think I have 
unhooked all the connectors. Less Lenovo, they don't make shitty fragile connectors than some other companies. So those all went out, no problem at all. And yeah, when I'm done with the fan, removing the fan, I think I need to continue with those little screws that hold down the board. Those are all here, the same holes. I think I got all the screws out. What I find kind of funny is how they glued this, I don't know, these antennas, these are unused, just on it here. This is how they did it from the factory. <laughs> That's interesting. Nevertheless, let's uh, see. I think I removed all of them. But it seems to be still in there pretty good. For work, I've actually removed a couple of those keyboards. So what you do is you slide this back, like this top layer. You just slide it down and then it reveals those screws here, as you see. And then you undo those screws. So I think those also screw in the board somehow. That's, I think, what's the case. But I don't know. So <laughs> we'll just uh, undo this, see if that did it. So keyboard is out, um, although it's still pretty solid, so that didn't do it. I think I still should have removed it nevertheless just to get to those easier. So yeah, it's not for nothing really, it's a couple of minutes of work. But now we gotta find the reason why this thing is so stubborn. Maybe behind those here somewhere, guys, here. Here, <laughs> I don't know. See this thing here is like keeping it from getting out. I don't know, is that a glue? It's something like really tough. <laughs> I don't know guys. That also seemed to be the case here, so I can't be all wrong because that's all, the only thing that keep that's keeping it in there. So I'll just keep pushing it and it will release eventually. That was the only thing keeping it down. So as you see that piece there, I don't like what it did with this bracket, but it shouldn't be a big deal. There is the old board. Oh yeah. And also take out this SIM card tray just to, to get it out eventually. That's what I forgot. <laughs> so there it is, old one. And now everything in reverse. And hope that uh, it all bolts up and stuff. From the looks, it's looking good. But yeah, now I have to move the cables all in their position, screw it in. Powered on eventually and hope that it works. And oh, yeah, so you see, I cleaned the uh, CPU off, it's ready for a new thermal paste. Yeah, wasn't that hard really. Let's see if our success continues. So, I got all the connectors hooked up, I think I did, um, but looking good. I uh, got a little confused with all the screw holes here, so I only use those with the label which i think is correct <laughs> um not sure honestly but i got a feeling that those screw in there and you know let's just hope <laughs> uh, but minor thing so now thermal paste and fan and then batteries and then we're really ready to boot this up for the first time and hope that it works I'm even that confident that it's going to work, that I'm going to put everything back together except the back panel. Um, because I just feel good with ThinkPads that uh, stuff like this works. But you never know. I mean, oh, after all, this is a huge change in the system. I don't know how the, the Windows will react to it and all the drivers. But for the most part, it's the same hardware. So uh, it should be okay for the most part, I think. Oh, yeah. And... Um, Let's put that back in too. There it is. Yeah. Let's do thermal paste and batteries and fan. And then we should be 
ready for start. So I accidentally pressed the power button there because I'm currently working on getting this shitty keyboard back in. That's really something I don't like about those machines. But um, yeah, because I accidentally pressed it, as you see, it works. That motivates me that I can get this shit done. I really don't like those keyboards, but yeah. It's looking good so far. There it is. It booted right up there. Oh yeah, and the pin needs to be redone. Okay, that's good, that's good. Let me fight the keyboard. And then, um, yeah, finish it off because that's looking very good. And it's back together, as you see. Back is on, keyboard is back, and I managed to break the F1 key, so maybe be a little more careful than I was with this grid that slides back. I don't know, I thought I got it figured out by now because I've did a fair amount of those and still I break stuff, so that uh, kind of sucks, but yeah, it is what it is. Maybe I'll replace this with like a backlit one, that would be cool. But most importantly, the thing boots, or at least it did once. Yep, it booted into Windows, and um, yeah, that's all very nice. So I will boot into the operating system, check out if everything is uh, working fine, that nothing is kind of screwed. <laughs> It's making it interesting. There it is. Core i7 6600U, 2.6 gigahertz. So it's a good 100 megahertz faster as well. Wow. <laughs> let's go into device manager. So let's see if device manager complains about anything. Doesn't seem to do anything. Like nothing is here. That's very good. Um, or I don't know why this popped up now, but I'm gonna just run it. So now we have here the Skylake 6600U and yeah, Core i7. Rest still the same. That's that's very good actually. So it wants me to update this for whatever reason. Um, so we'll do that. That Intel management interface thing is probably related to the new processor so i think it's a pretty important update yeah so let's let it do that and then we'll check on the windows activation looks like that also didn't change which is good but yeah let's run that update bios is updated to the latest version so yeah that's also good so far so good guys very nice Okay, guys, so everything seems to be restored to working order. My fingerprint works again. There it is. It's very convenient because I use that every time I log in. So that only needed a reset because of security, you know, we changed that the whole board and all that. So yeah, that was it. I ran this one update for the management interface and so far it hasn't given me any updates uh, anymore. So. I don't know why it always launches this Lenovo Vantage shit when I log in. So as you see, no updates here. I don't know why it always comes up with this. I might have to look into the auto starts. So yeah, the moment we've all been waiting for, guys. We need to beat those numbers. So I'm going to start here right away with Geekbench. So our first benchmark result is in. This is the i5 and this is the i7. So it's... A good 100 points better, you can say. I don't know, is that much? Probably not, but it's better. I mean, you can at least see it. <laughs> so that's good, I guess. So next up, I'm gonna do here the CPU-C test, which I don't know how much you can really rely on this test, but hey, it's a benchmark test, so why not do it? So this is what it's gored. It scored 340 single core and 883 multi core. So 
hardly any better on the multi, just a little bit, but better in the single core performance. Funnily enough, I don't know what that multi-thread ratio means, but it's higher on the i5. I don't know, guys, what that means. But there it is. I mean, those are pretty similar CPUs. Both are two-core, four-thread CPUs. So uh, as you see, it's a bit better on single-core performance. That's something. And now the big boss, which is going to take a very long time, probably. Cinebench. Let's do it. Would you look at that? Our Cinebench score is definitely significantly better. 1,300 on the i5 and 1,900 on the i7. So that's a good 600 points increase. Um, that would make it 30% give or take. So mm -hmm, I'll take that. <laughs> uh, and uh, on the single core score, it's it's marginally better. It's not that much better. It's a good hundred better. So still, I mean that's that's respectable, but especially on the multi-core. Um, so as you see, those benchmark programs they all differ really. So on the uh, Geek Bench, it was only hundred points. It would make it what a ten percent increase. And there I thought hmm, maybe that wasn't really worth it. But when I see that, that's a lot more in depth and then hardcore. Uh, benchmark test so yeah I can see it, it does have more performance and I hope that um, this will help me in day-to-day -day use you know using uh, heavy websites having big documents open and browsing through multiple stuff when I have a lot of things open that's what I'm looking f like this was what I was looking for with upgrade basically just give me more uh, performance in day-to-day uh, -day use or just a smoother experience um, maybe I'll even cut some videos on this who knows uh, because uh, that's a good you know if I can trust the Cinebench it's a good 30% faster and so yeah that would make it uh, quite a bit more friendly with video editing so was it worth it well I, again I can't say for sure but if I go from my results here with the Cinebench especially, then it was definitely worth it. Um, for example, I could also factor in the old board here, which is still working fine. If I can sell this for, let's say 70 euros, that would ma make my upgrade price 30 euros. And for 30 bucks, I'd take it any day. So yeah, if you have an old ThinkPad, you know, those are great machines. I love the form factor. I love the keyboard. I love its ruggedness. And I didn't want to upgrade the whole computer. And so I thought, hey, that, that's maybe a um, good way to increase its power. So now I think we really reached the end here. I don't think you can make it even faster. Sure, you could put in more RAM. But in my case, that's not really going to make that big a difference anymore. I have 12 gigabytes, so that's plenty for me. You could maybe, you know, upgrade it to even more RAM. But that's like, that's the end of it. You can't go higher, I think. So, yeah, I like how this turned out. It's a fairly easy upgrade to do. Not that expensive as well. I highly recommend it if you're into tinkering and like you have a lower end ThinkPad, go ahead. It's not that big of a deal. If you can get the motherboard like me for a good price, go for it. So yeah, I'm happy. This will probably live on with me for another one to two years now. It worked. <laughs> Thanks for watching and see you later, guys.